out on a mission and there's a task that I have to complete, I know that if I follow my commander's lead, I can accomplish anything. Maintaining this plane is pretty complicated, but thanks to my commander, I feel confident, and I know I'm helping the pilot keep Israel's sky safe and return home to his family safely. When there's trouble at sea, our commander can steer us through any situation. My commander teaches, empowers, and trusts me. I'm his commander. I'm his commander. In 1948, David Ben-Gurion, Israel's first Prime Minister and Minister of Defense, established mandatory military service in the IDF for both men and women. Since then, most jobs in the IDF have opened up to women. One of those to break the glass ceiling is Lieutenant Colonel Efrat. She is the first woman to command a combat battalion in the Artillery Corps. Lieutenant Colonel Efrat, hello. I want to ask you first and foremost about Brigade 282. Our mission is to destroy enemy targets and to provide cover fire for the IDF ground forces. What is unique about the brigade with regard to women serving in combat? Since 2021, women in our brigade serves in a combat position like the men. So you have women and men under your command. What does it mean to you to be a commanding officer in this battalion? You know that you are responsible to a life of a people. You know that you are responsible to a very uh, bigger mission. And if I need to say it as a Zionist person, because I am defined myself as a Zionist person, even if it sounds like a cliche, that uh, this is my life mission. So what does it mean to you to be a woman who's a commanding officer in the IDF? I really believe that the IDF is a mirror to the Israeli society. And if we want equality in the Israeli society, women should should and have to take a position as a combat uh, soldiers. In the IDF, women have to volunteer to be combat soldiers. They can't be assigned. So why did you volunteer to serve in a combat unit? I decided to be a, a combat uh, soldier in the artillery corps because my father also was an officer in the artillery corps. Unfortunately, he died three months ago. Uh, but I know that he was very proud in all the way uh, I'm doing in, this, uh, in the army. Uh, and it's kind of uh, became to be my mission to uh, go in his way and to do. Um, I, he was with me all this way, and he also saw me uh, getting a, a command, became a commander on this battalion, but we didn't finish the mission. So I feel today that I am like connecting our uh, mission. Uh, he's not here with me, but is totally here all the time. That's really incredible, and it makes me ask about inspiration in general. Are there soldiers or situations that have given you inspiration during your service over the years? I'm taking it from my uh, soldiers, the, the officers that I'm command on, uh, from the mission, from the importance of the mission, and and from the love uh, to the person. I really love to the person that served in my battalion. Speaking of inspiration, soldiers like you are an inspiration to FIDF and FIDF supporters back in the US. How does it make you feel? First of all, I will take the opportunity to say thank you to the FIDF supporters um, in the United States of America. It means, means a lot for us to know that you are with us, even that you like in a far away distance from us. So I do have one last question for you. As women take on more and more roles in the IDF, do you have any message to all the young women out there right now, both in Israel or watching at home? I think that there is no gender in a defense on a country. So I think that if you want to take part in a defending the country, the gender is not a question. You should do it. You should take a part of this mission. Hi, my name is Gary Sabach. I'm an impact a graduate. I studied mechanical engineering in Tel Aviv University. I was born and raised in Ashdod. I'm 35 years old, and today I'm a project manager in KLA company.
I was serving in a special unit of divers. We are doing a lot of stuff under the water. We are uh, maintaining uh, the ships, searching for stuff under the water. Basically, you are diving and doing everything under the water. Being one of the first female divers in the Navy was a milestone back then. Today, I'm proud to say that we have many more women in the unit and in the IDF in general. And I truly hope that uh, in the future, and time goes on, we will see many more women in these unique positions that we won't need to say, she is the first woman. Although I'm working a full-time job and a pretty intense one as a project uh, manager, and I'm a mother of a newborn, I'm still doing a uh, military duty reserve. Uh, currently, I'm doing 10, 15 days a year. Back then, when I got off the army, I was doing uh, 50, 60 days. It was great. So the first time I heard about IMPACT was in my second year of my study. And uh, I got a phone call from IMPACT that I got a scholarship. And it felt like someone took a weight over my body because someone told me that you can get money, you can concentrate on your study, you don't have to struggle anymore to get money to pay for it. And, and I'm, we are take care, taking care of you. Golly, Eugene and I are so proud of you and all your accomplishments. <laughs> it's the greatest reward for us to see how you've thrived. It's also beautiful that you've chosen to sponsor your own impact students so that they too have the opportunity to fulfill their dreams. We wish you continued success in everything that you do and may all your dreams come true. That's amazing. Very exciting. <laughs> it was sure for me that one day when I will have the ability, I will do it. And I can tell you that this is the best feeling. The ability to give is the, the greatest ability a human can have. So what if I tell you that uh, Hila is here? Hila? <laughs> I would be very happy to see her. <laughs> so this is Hila. She's studying mechanical engineering, like you, like me. Yeah. I think even if uh, I had difficult with the study and it's not easy, the the degree at all, I'm not gonna quit at any point. I'm gonna do the best I can get. Can do. Don't afraid to speak up your mind and pursue challenges and embrace those opportunities to be a better version of you every day. Gali, thank you for being the biggest influence in my life. I hope we'll stay in touch and I'm happy that you are my donor. Thank you and thank you for coming here. Do you know you will come? It was a surprise. It was great seeing you. Good luck. Thank you. When a platoon of combat soldiers steps onto the battlefield, they need to know that if, God forbid, one or more of them are injured, that they will be in good hands. Today, we're in the Golan Heights to meet with Dr. Nofit, the first ever female doctor in the paratroopers. This job entails her going into battle with IDF combat soldiers, even if it means going into enemy territory. Hi, Nofit. Hi, Joel. Thanks for spending time with us on FIDF Live. So when you draft at the age of 18, do you know you're going to become a doctor? Yeah, well, I wanted to be a doctor ever since I was 12 years old. I feel like I wanted to be where the soldiers needed me the most. I know that they are ready to sacrifice their lives for our country, and I wanted to be there to save their lives in the field. Did you struggle to get this role? Yeah. During the final trainings, uh, I had to compete with other doctors and also to go through interviews in order to get here. Uh, the paratrooper brigade is the best brigade among the infantry brigades and also it's breaking the glass ceiling for other women as it's the first time a female doctor has been selected to serve in the paratroopers. So I'm really happy about it. Day to day, what does the job entail being a combat doctor? I'm the one who influences the medical operational doctrine. 
Uh, generally, I'm the head of everything related to medicine in front of the commander of our battalion, and this is why this job is really important. And I do need to ask, how does it feel to go on life-threatening missions knowing that you are responsible for the soldiers medically? It's not simple. During those missions, I know that if something happens, I need to react as one of the combat soldiers. I know that my presence gives the soldiers the confidence and the serenity to go and focus in their missions. They want me to walk with them, and they know that I will be there for them. Ben is a lone soldier from New Jersey serving in the paratroopers, and Nofit is the doctor assigned to his battalion. Ben, what does it mean to you as a combat soldier to have someone like Nofit serving right there alongside you? Knowing that we have Nofit with us and all of her medical uh, staff that could come when, uh, with a second's notice to, to come help us in, in any situation that we might face, um, is, is something that's really assuring and comforting to us. Um, anything could happen out in the field, and knowing that there is someone in a team that is experienced and professional um, that is there um, is something that we definitely rely on and, and need with us. Can you tell us about any operational missions that you went on? After two weeks of starting the job, I had to participate in a big uh, battalion drill. I had to climb with the combat soldiers a few mountains, including Mount Hermon all with heavy packs and a lot of equipment. I finished with bleeding feet, but a lot of pride, being the only woman standing with the, my combat soldiers, singing Hatikva with them. That was a really memorable moment. You have an incredibly taxing job, a lot of responsibility. Do the soldiers appreciate how hard you work? They do. Um, as one of my combat companies were in the last day of serving in the battalion, uh, they came out of nowhere to my office I stood there and started to applaud me. It really caught me off guard. Uh, they thanked me, they praised me, and I was so happy to see it. One of the soldiers also said that he put a note in the Western Wall and he thanked God for sending me as their doctor. The soldier's appreciation means everything to me. So one personal question, we did hear that you are getting married soon. Tell us about that. Yes, his name is Levi. Uh, he came as a lone soldier from the U.S. and served in the Armored Reconnaissance Platoon. And it's a really great story. Uh, we met just two weeks before he was about to leave to the U.S. After one semester, he bought a round-trip plane tickets in order to visit me, but he never used the return flight. And next month, we are getting married. Well, Mazal Tov. And we do have one final question. You've now been on this journey for more than nine years. I want to ask, what is becoming a doctor and serving in the IDF up to this point mean to you in the bigger context of your life? Well, I think that life is about developing and taking risks. Uh, going out of your comfort zone and being the better version of yourself. Being a combat doctor in the paratroopers really took me to the edge. You do need a lot of mental strength in order to be here, but in the end, it's very rewarding. Hello everyone, I am Brigadier General Ela Shedo and I am the advisor to the Chief of the General Staff on Gender Affair. In honor of the International Women's Day, I would like to share with you all some of the amazing achievements that our wonderful women in the IDF have accomplished. The number of women in the combat position in the IDF has grown tremendously as more and more women are applying to those roles they encourage other women to do so as well. We are constantly working very hard to improve and provide a respectful environment to all those serving in the IDF, and we have zero tolerance to anything that goes against this protocol. Women in the IDF serve in leadership roles and star as the decision makers. These women keep pushing the military forward. I would like to encourage all of you, strong women, who are watching this to keep moving forward and pursue your passion and dreams. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Happy International Women's Day.